and Jordan Moore. The All-American Sean Cody, our quarterback Max Brown, and the head coach Lincoln Riley. Appreciate you taking the time with us on a Monday night. USC's head coach interview is presented by iTrust Capital Retire with Crypto. This is a uh, a show building up to the big spring game on Saturday. That'll kick around noon. Uh, so get to the Coliseum for that. Uh, coach, what uh, what can the fans expect to see on Saturday? Well, it should be a fun day. Um, I mean, obviously building off the the excitement of year one. Um, and, and kind of what that became. And, you know, this team's done a really nice job really throughout spring. I mean, we're <laughs> – I know we've talked about it probably even too much, but the, how far ahead we are compared to year one and to, to be able to put that on display for our fans I think will be great. Obviously, we're excited to to be able to, to do, you know, Caleb's Heisman presentation. You know, a lot of people don't know when, when, you, when a school wins a Heisman, the, the player gets a Heisman. And then the school also gets a trophy as well, and it's a it's a big deal because they the Heisman Trust comes in, they bring it in, they typically do it around the spring game, and they're they're only going to be at one spring game, obviously this year, <laughs> and that's the Trojans. So that that'll be a cool moment, have a chance to honor some of our our seniors from this last year, and yeah, and I, and I think there's a lot of new exciting players that our our fans will certainly be excited to see. Coach, what's this game going to look like? You know, you, there's a lot of ton, of ton of different ways to do a spring ball game. You've seen it where it's more of just a kind of a showcase or, or teams get after it. What are you what are you trying to get from this game and what, what is it kind of going to look like? Yeah, we're going to play ball. We're going to, you know, the, from a, a defensive and offensive perspective, we're going to we're going to go live. We're going to play. Um, we're going to play half a football. So it'll happen. You know, it's uh, I think for our fans, you get in, you get to see a, a good Fun field, exciting half of football. It's not going to take all day. We're going to we're going to hustle through it and then uh, and then move on. We'll do a few special teams phases to let those guys work, but those won't necessarily be live. Ooh, those are the highlights for me. Special teams. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, we, we got some guys there. I think they'll enjoy seeing. And uh, yeah, so we're we're looking forward to the game. I mean, I think the we we've worked with this uh, format and we did it last year, which is. You always try to find a way if you if you can't go two completely separate teams, um, which we're not quite able to. How do you make it competitive? Mm. And so we came up with this format a few years ago, and we actually every single time we've done it, we've had a like one score very close game <laughs> where the defense starts with so many points. They have a few ways like a like creating a turnover, a pick six, a safety uh, for a fourth down stop where they can add to that score. Yep. And then obviously you've got the offense trying to score in traditional ways to to catch them. But it's been, uh, like I said, I think this will be the third one that we've done, and uh, either third or fourth, and all of them have been, you know, one score pretty record? tight games. What's the record? I think it's tied. Oh, I think we're yeah. I think go. if it's, it's third, I think it's one one. Yeah, so it's been good. Yeah. Of uh, the Heisman Trophy winners you've had, Caleb's the first to return mm -hmm. next year. What what's that process been like for you personally, having to grow with? I mean, obviously, it's a luxury having an elite quarterback, but you're still trying to improve and get better and uh, add new wrinkles. What's that process been like for you? Yeah, it's you know, first time, first time in a while, you know, for me to have a, a guy that's you know played at that level, you know, has played very well. Um, first time probably since Baker, uh, you know, back in from 2016 to 2017 to have a guy that was really playing at a high level and to, to have another opportunity with him, and it's been fun. You know, it's I mean. In the meeting room, it's just, you know, coach and player and trying to get that player better and trying to coach them better. And, and so there's still, you know, the outside perception is, well, you know, guy plays good or, you know, wins an award. Well, everything was perfect. Well, no, it wasn't. You know, like it not – there was a, obviously a lot of great, but there's – this guy's still very early on when you look at kind of the scope of his career – of, of what he could progress to. And so we're trying to continually just take those steps. And uh, it's been a fun spring. I mean, we're just – we communicate better, and, and it's a really good room. I mean, having Miller Moss in there and Jake Jensen and now Malachi and those guys, like the room is is a pretty interactive room. The guys push each other mentally because you got several guys in there that know it very well. And so um, – yeah, it's been it's been a good competitive situation, and Caleb's grown. He's definitely uh, he's definitely improved at some of the things that we really pushed on him uh, this spring. You're listening to the head coach Lincoln Riley on Trojans Live. Uh, coach, uh, size up the running back room for me. That's one that's been uh, we have some 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 names and faces uh, that we know in there, but uh, but some change and uh, a combination of, of freshmen and transfer coming in. Well, one bigger, <laughs> <laughs> definitely bigger. Um, that was a, a key. 
I think a key room that we needed to address, obviously with with Travis, uh, you know, with Travis exhausting his eligibility, um, being a little thin there last year. We we wanted to get a few more bodies, and we certainly wanted to add, to add some size, right? To have, to have a little bit different skill set in the room, and so it has. I mean, Austin Jones coming back was a, a huge plus for us. I mean, in every sense of the word, for both his play, his leadership, yep. what he just kind of brings. Um, you can't have enough guys like that. Uh, you know, Darwin Barlow had some really nice moments at the end of last season, especially the UCLA game, and I think he's built off of that. And his confidence levels really, I think, grown. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd, obviously, that we brought in from South Carolina, is very explosive. He's, you know, one of, if not the most explosive guy in the room, and uh, he's been a welcome addition. He has a nice combination, and obviously has some really good game experience. And then the two puppies, you know, that are. You know, Amarion is kind of the big bruiser, you know, really strong player, uh, really physical, really tough. And then uh, Quentin Joyner has had, a, has had a tremendous spring. I mean, he he seems to just make a big play every single day and uh, has a little strength and power to him. He's, he's kind of a, a unique guy. And so, yeah, it's I think both with the returners and, and then the, the three new guys in the room, it's exciting uh, to kind of watch those guys. Obviously, Relik is still, you know, kind of we're kind of doing all kinds of things with him right now. So, I love the room. I love the depth. I love that we've got uh, maybe a, a more, uh, maybe a better mix of skill sets than maybe we did last year, which has been fun to work with. Coach, you're able to add another guy to the 2023 class. Induce Robinson, uh, the tight end, uh, the tall uh, lad, may I say the least, six six, <laughs> can get out there and. Uh, get the ball I'm sure for you what does he what does he bring to that tight end room I, I feel like I'm getting old I played with his dad a long time ago Dante Robinson when the, so when kids are playing with Jeep man I feel like an old man up here but uh yeah <laughs> Deuce Robinson what is what does he bring to that tight end room Deuce is unique he's uh in in years recruiting he's one of the more unique prospects that I can I can remember recruiting yeah. anywhere um you know, it was three and a half year recruitment. I mean, I first saw him in his freshman year um, at Pinnacle High School there in Phoenix, and we we didn't really know what he was going to become, to be honest, because he was honestly about the same size that he is right now, and uh, his body's went through a little bit of a transformation, and, and we kind of thought, I know when we first offered him, we kind of thought he was just going to be just huge. I mean, we thought he might be a you know, six seven, two hundred and seventy five pound yeah. guy, and and really the way his body's evolved has been interesting. And some of it has to do with obviously the the baseball and and what he's doing on that end. He's a phenomenal baseball player, but he's really leaned out, and he's as oh, as time's gone on, he hasn't really got much bigger. He just got more athletic and smoother. And so you've got a you know kind of a six six, two hundred twenty five guy pound guy that moves like a kind of like a wide out, like doesn't move like yeah. what you would think, and so. He'll be a fun skill set. I mean, you pair him up with uh, obviously, you know, Kate Eldridge coming in, who we were, you know, really, really high on, and then obviously Walker, you know, coming in after his mission. I mean, that having some of those those big skill bodies, and they're all very different. And I we will use those guys, I think, in three very different ways. But um, yeah, Deuce is he's unique. I mean, you could see why he was obviously coveted by every major program in the country. Looking at the offensive line, it feels like this time last year. You're still figuring out the right and left tackle spot a little bit, but you, you, you had clarity, at least from our seat, in, in terms of what the interior of the offensive line would look like. This year, I'm sure through four weeks of spring ball, you have more clarity than you did two months ago. But are you to the stage now where you kind of know the five, six guys in the rotation, or is it um, still a lot to, lot to uncover going into fall camp? So there'll be some to uncover, but I think we, we can definitely see – who guys that are likely, you know, very strong contributors are. I mean, certainly, you know, the conversation would, of course, start with, with Justin Dietz and Jonah Monheim. I mean, they're, you know, they're our two leaders and, and you know, two our two steadiest players. Uh, you know, Dietz has made the move to center and playing it in the bowl game was super helpful for him. Um, it's really going to help us going forward. And, and he's built on that. And he's, especially this, like this second half of spring, he's really started to turn it on and look like a, you know, really an elite player at that position. Um, Jonah has really improved, uh, which the way he works, how consistent he is, that's no surprise, but has really improved. Um, and yeah, and then you've got just kind of a, a group of guys, uh, you know, kind of there that are either new or kind of that have been in the program that are trying to, to really uplift themselves. I mean, Jarrett Kingston's been really good this spring. Uh, I think he's, you know, our, our strongest and maybe our most physical offensive lineman. I mean, he is really 
been impressive uh, inside. He was a, a great addition, and and uh, you know certainly you know feel like he's going to be in line to play a strong role. Uh, we've been real pleased with Michael Tarquin. We've been real pleased with uh, with Mason Murphy and his development. He obviously got some great experience last year, a young guy thrown into a bunch of unique situations, especially in the second half of the season. Uh, Cortland Ford has really improved his body. He's been a little limited with the with the small offseason procedure that he had, so hasn't been able to get all the competitive reps, but has really changed his body and is moving extremely well. So we'll obviously be excited to get him back because he did some nice things at the end of the year for us as well. So, and then yeah, you got a a group of newcomers um, obviously that are that are getting ready to come in here. Um, that we'll be excited to see those four freshmen that aren't here. And the two other guys I would mention that really to me have stood out would be uh, Gino Canonis. He's he's had a fantastic spring. Has really taken advantage of some of these guys being out and an opportunity to really grow. And another guy that started for us in the bowl game and did some nice things that I think is building on it. And then I've been real pleased with Andrew Millick, uh, another guy that I think is um, has really got a shot to help this football team. He's you know was our backup center last year, but. Um, he's playing a little bit more guard right now this spring, and which has been a good move for him and very, very physical player. And so, yeah, I mean, I think the depth's going to be great, and you're going to have four, you know, talented freshmen to the mix, um, obviously here in June. You're listening to Lincoln Riley on Trojans Live. Uh, Coach, later on tonight, we're going to talk to Austin Overn, who's just killing it for USC baseball. And I know you love that story. He's a walk on. Uh, on your football team, but you can almost fill the entire baseball team with the amount of talent you have on your football team. And, and then you also very famously coached uh, you know, Kyler Murray, who was an elite uh, baseball player. And, you know, Sean uh, mentioned Deuce Robinson just coming in, who's, who's an elite uh, baseball talent. Is there something to it? Is there, do you see something in, the, in that, partic- uh, that particular cross training or, or any of those skills that, that, that you look for when you're recruiting these athletes that, that you like? Well, first, it's never scared us away. Uh, which it does some people. Uh, I, we, we love the multi-sport athletes, um, and whether they're professional level, level in that other sport or not, just a, the fact that they can compete, um, and then I think it makes it easier to evaluate them. Um, you know, we, we probably you know have, have gotten a little bit of you know credit, or we've got some built-in, I guess, credibility that's been established because of some of the success of, of these guys, and, and being able to go through that experience with them, it's it's just very different allowing somebody to play another sport versus trying to really facilitate them being great at multiple sports. It's two totally different things. And we learned a lot uh, throughout the time, but I think I think that experience has, has, uh, has benefited us and benefited those players. And, you know, the fact that, I mean, a lot of these guys, I mean, you take like, you know, Kyler's situation, for example. I mean, you've got, you know, you've got the same, you know, head coach, you've got the same, uh, strength coach, you got the same operations guy here that you know did all of that in that situation there, and so having having that staff, you know, that, that has all of us been through it and have some experience and have learned a few things about it, I think has certainly helped. Coach, we sat here last year, and I tried to bribe my way into getting invited to Easter. Uh, last year with a key lime pie. Unfortunately, we have gone over two now with uh, with Easter's and and, and getting the invitation. Uh, Coach, what does a guy like Sean Cody have to do to get that invite for Easter? And ninety dollar ha- food. And, and how was your Easter, by the way? <laughs> Sean, you're welcome at my place anytime. <laughs> hey, hey, there we go. Um, Easter was great. Yeah, Easter was great. We had a re- really fun scrimmage Saturday morning in the Coliseum and a, and a fun activity with with recruits and the team after and then. Sunday was awesome. A little church, great meal with the family, um, and then we were just outside all day. Get out, kids get around. out of the eggs. Oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> they did well. They ate a lot of candy. Um, I may have taken a couple. There you on, go. Yeah, maybe maybe one or two. So, now nah, great time with the family, man. It was uh, awesome being able to celebrate. All right. Well, we will see Coach uh, back where he's at his happiest, the Coliseum, on Saturday. Trojans spring game. Again, it kicks off at noon. Uh, tickets are free, but you can re- reserve them in advance. So uh, get to it. Get in the, in the Coliseum. Be your last chance to watch the Trojans uh, until they kick it off for real in the fall. Thank you to the head coach.